So, good afternoon. I'm the only one between you and the beer, and uh, so you put me under pressure, not you, on Chris did, actually. So I'm Thomas Valenta, and um, actually you can reach me under this email, or I'm on LinkedIn and so on. And um, actually I'm a uh, retired IBM program and project manager, so I'm on my own now since, since two years, and uh, traveling the world and doing still something I understand about a little bit. Who in this room can say he is a program manager? Anybody here in this room? One, two. So I expect your questions and your, uh, your critical thoughts about what I'm saying here. If not in, in this, uh, in this uh, discussion, maybe afterwards. Who is a project manager? Two of you, both. No, well. Who else? Project manager? You? You? Less. And who is a developer? The most of you. It's a developer uh, conference. So as a developer, do you recognize this? Yeah. yeah. Who is recognizing this? OK, OK, OK. I'll, I'll give you it. It's a, actually, it's the size of a dollar bill, and it's a IBM punch card. And you can, have, you can, can take some, I have some, some more here if you are interested. Some take it in the museum right now. It's when I started working in uh, 74, yes, 70, 1974, not 18, 1974. Um, I, I started using these punch cards at IBM, actually. So I was a programmer in the first 14 years of my career. Uh, and then I became a uh, systems engineer, also a technical guy. And all of a sudden, in 88, I decided to skip all this, so cut off the tie and become a project manager. And that's what I did for the next uh, 14, 15 years, being a project manager in different industries. So I never was in the same industry. I was in insurance, in, uh, in um, uh, justice departments, in investment banking, doing projects. And then from 2003, I eventually uh, well, grew up into a program manager position. And now I'm a certified program manager and doing that since, uh, since uh, I left IBM um, in, a, in a private uh, uh, environment a little bit. So what I'm talking about is what is the difference between uh, a project and a program and a project manager and a program manager. I, I skipped manager here because otherwise the title would have been too long. So consider this lion, you know? So it's a great protector of the tribe. Uh, he, he has a short memory and short life, actually. So lions, maybe they, they get 12, 15 years old. Uh, maybe they're killed earlier. But they are here to support the family, so they go, they go hunting in a tribe, try to do that. Interestingly, lions are only successful in hunting in less than 50% of the cases. And the rest, they have to look for dead meat lying around, being hunted by hyena or, or, or other animals. But still, they are feared, you know, and you think it's the king of the animals. And I compare the lion to a project manager, you know. He might be feared by somebody on, on the team or by the client because he doesn't understand him. Uh, and project managers, as we heard today, they are only successful in less than 50% of the cases, you know. So the project really doesn't come, come in, in in success compared to an elephant. An elephant has a long memory, a long life, so some of them get 80 years old. Um, they are supporting an whole in, uh, ecosystem. They also have a big tribe and a, and a family and, and taking care about these. They show some emotions you know, about their, their little ones. But they are also successful in most cases. So what, what they try to do, what they try to, to, to get uh, food or water, but they, they are achieved that, and they are respected. By the way, they kill more humans every year than lions do. So, yeah, they are quite successful. So what do you want to be? What do you need in doing something for the company? If the company is striving for a uh, result, you know, do you want a quick kill? Something that is maybe not successful in 50% of the cases? Or do you look for something that's sustainable that really brings in a benefit and a value to the company? So that's why you need program managers. And a project manager might not be the right choice. And I'll show you in the next uh, slides. Uh, there are 
at least five big differences between a project manager and a program manager, which make, make up uh, um, uh, some reasons to discuss with your management and also consider your own career development. So the first gap between a project and a program manager is um, about what do you say is a successful project, what do you say is a successful program. Successful project, traditionally, we say, okay, he comes in and has to build a bridge in time, in scope, under the cost. Well, well, successful bridge. Clap his shoulders. Good project manager. But doesn't make any sense to the environment. Only, you know, when you look at the uh, whole system of bridges and streets and other things that come together, when you have a lot of these projects coming together and being combined in something, then you have a program. A program consists of several projects, you know, being managed together to achieve a, uh, a, a synergetic benefit to everything. So that is a program. And the outcome is you have a, uh, a, a, a traffic system where, where the traffic can flow much easier than, than before. And the value of that program is not that there is a, a, a traffic system now and the, the, the cars can, can travel quickly. The value really is for the family of the driver who now needs less time to commute and has more time for his family. That is a, the value. Is it a value that is being um, uh, expressed in financial terms? Well, you could try so, but it doesn't really make sense. The value is in itself a value for a stakeholder. That is that's the mean. So this is the first um, uh, difference. A project has a target, and it's an output, and it should be achieved in a certain time frame, and it should be achieved to a certain cost. So that's how a project is defined by the project management standards. You know? And this is not enough, really, to, uh, to uh, create a value. You need an interim step to, uh, to see what the, what the outcomes of a program are. Um, that's called benefits. I, I, I use the term that the outcome of a program and benefits are, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, service around this. You see the, here they serve at the companies um, that are using benefits management as a, as a tool set, as a, as a process, as, as something they do against companies that don't do that. And you see, uh, the projects and the, uh, and the goals and the business intent is fulfilled quite higher by these companies that are using benefits management. So in the moment, the tendency of, of thinking is that benefits management is a, linking, is a missing link between project uh, uh, outcomes and really value delivery in an organization. Another survey um, by another source, a corporate executive board, um, they, they looked at uh, projects that were considered to be successful projects, like the bridge. No, the bridge is there and it was, came in, in in time and in cost. And then even from, from these um, several hundred projects that they considered, only on average 53% really achieved the expected business outcome, were successful from terms of, terms of business. So I just used these two uh, uh, service. There are a lot more out, uh, out there, and uh, we, we saw some in, in the stream today. So it's clearly that we have a problem with project delivery, and we have a problem with uh, achieving a business value. So how, how to do that? And yeah, this is the success definition gap. We have really to look at, at benefits uh, as a success criteria for programs. Uh, secondly, we have an education gap. So if you look at project manager education, um, we, we still uh, look at the magic triangle, you know, uh, the scope, the quality is, is looked at, and the cost and time, and that's, that's what, what's being taught. It's taught what is being included in all the standards, you know. We might, might look at some organizational skills, technology, and sometimes, sometimes soft skills, uh, interpersonal skills are being also considered. Um, by the way, um, this is a a triangle, you know, the, the talent triangle of, of PMI saying there are three areas of competencies that a project or a program manager might have. So the first area is the technical project management skills, which are exactly what is learned here, magic triangle, scope, quality, cost, which is taught in all these classes. Uh, the second is 
the business environment, so you understand what the business case is, you understand how to do the benefits, which is uh, almost never taught to project managers in the moment. But the third and, and the most important, many people say, is the leadership capabilities, which includes in the personal skills, but also self-awareness and all this stuff. So it's uh, quite in time, Helena, that you came up with this kind of information and, and, and tool. Yeah? By the way, I, I, I read a Harvard Business Review uh, article uh, just in August stating that the market for leadership education globally every year is 350 billion dollars. Uh, the global market for leadership education. And most of the programs that are stated are not successful because you want to change behaviors and it doesn't work in a workshop. It has a, uh, the need for the coaching and uh, ongoing Im improvement. So if you look at the uh, uh, competency frameworks, these are the three uh, areas, practice, people leadership, and pers perspective, business and environment. The methodology gap. So if you um, go into the uh, PIMBOK guide from PMI, so I'm, I'm a friend of PMI. You know, I'm a member of PMI and working for them for a long time. Um, the term benefit is only find, found 24 times in that. And um, if you look at the program management standard, it was also a standard from PMI, so you find the term benefits much, much more uh, frequently. Actually, benefits management is one of the four domains that is promoted by the program management standard. So if you want to look into the benefits management, which we explained in the first gap, you know, the, the target gap, then you have to look into that uh, uh, area of program management in the moment. So even uh, I look at the Excelus uh, Prince 2 methods and the uh, IPMA methods. So benefits is not in a focus in all of, of these uh, competency areas. And even the, the new um, ISO standard, 21500, which is about project management, uh, really doesn't mention benefits very often. Only in one point that it says all projects contribute to benefits, but they don't really manage them or identify and create them. So that is uh, the, the point of that of these uh, standards. It's, so standards in project management don't help in the moment. So what is then, by the way, uh, necessary to create benefits for stakeholders, for users of something, for the company? So when sponsors, when stakeholders also have the idea that we should have these benefits, so they have requirements, they might have a strategy, and then what to do? Well, you do a program. And a program is defined as a group of related projects managed in a coordinated way to obtain benefits. And that's the main po point of the program. And control not available for managing them individually. Though they might include uh, elements of related work outside of the scope. So what is the program then? It's consisting of the benefits management cycle phases and of a lot of projects and maybe other work which create discrete benefits and together only these consolidated benefits are that what the stakeholders need and they don't need it at the point when the pro pro program ends but they also need it sustained over time so the, the value to delivery through the uh, benefits remember there's the traffic system you know if the traffic system is there and but it breaks down next week the benefit was achieved, you know, but the value is not delivered, sustained. And this is what was meant by sustainable benefits. So this is the whole system. You have a lot of projects with scope, cost, time and deliverables, which might uh, constitute discrete benefits. They come together to cons consolidated benefits. And um, yeah, so this is uh, the build up of the program. And you can imagine if you want to build this up, you can manage that quite different skills are required than if you just want to manage such a project and create a deliverable. These are the four domains I talked about which are described in the, in the program management guide of, uh, of PMI. So what a program manager is doing is stakeholder engagement and this means really influencing all the stakeholders, the sponsors to accept and to help and, 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 and to uh, uh, yeah, to help create the benefits in the end. Benefits realization, which is this process, 
Governance means uh, managing the relationship between stakeholders. So making clear who reports to whom, who gets which uh, approval, and, and, and yeah, not only creating the org chart, but also making clear that, that these uh, relationships work well to the benefit of the, of the whole uh, program. And strategy alignment, because yeah, while you are doing that program, and um, I'm just now setting up a program for a client which has a duration, we now think, nine years. So if you look at that, nine years program, you know, certainly key stakeholders up front here, it will change. Maybe the CEO will not be there after five years, and then what do you then? Yeah? So we have to, to build in something that we can uh, look at strategy alignment, that we, if the strategy changes, what are we doing with that? Did, did we describe these benefits so well that it will be sustainable even if key stakeholders uh, change over time? This is another view, and I don't go into detail on that. Details on that, you see the five steps of benefits uh, realization, and you see all the artifacts that are behind that described in the project management guide. So here you can see, if you want to look into benefits, I think it would be a good idea to look into the program management profession and to see what the difference is to the project management. This has nothing to do with project management, the artifacts. Project management happens here, and only here. Yeah? When the program manager decides, we now start this project and we receive the results and the outcomes of that project. The fourth gap, difference between project and, and, and program manager, is there was a, uh, a survey in the 2003 um, in UK, and they looked at the group of uh, excellent project managers and a group of excellent program managers, excellent from the view of their customers. Uh, and they thought, okay, what, uh, what kind of behavior, what kind of attitude do they exhibit? And they found that, well, these are totally different personalities. A good project manager, for example, uh, his focus is on the detail. So he has to know what's going on in the project every day at least every week, you know? while a program manager doesn't care about that. He is more involved in bringing the things together, the components and all the, all the other stuff. So it's more an integrative view. Do you need something from him? Did you talk to each other? Translate the requirements. Project managers are reactive. Why? Because they try to plan. And as we learned, you know, the plan will fail anyhow. So they have to react on plan fa failures, on changes, on, on deviations or whatever, while the program manager doesn't care so much about the plan. You know? He is looking forward. What can I do to improve the benefits, to increase them, and to make the whole thing more successful? And I don't go through all these things, but uh, if you want to, I can uh, send you that, that paper of uh, Sergio Pellegrinelli, and there has to be some more work on that. I, I just found this is a very good uh, way to understand that the personalities are different. So it's difficult for a good project manager to become a program manager. When I did that in 2003, I quit doing projects. So I did another project in 2008, but only by chance. But from 2003, I then never did a project plan or budget or something. Yeah, I only did the program management part. So you have to do, you can do both maybe, but you have really to understand that these are totally different roles and it's very hard for somebody to have the same role in, a, in a, maybe the same pro, uh, a different role in the same program and, and try to be a project and a program manager. <coughs> Another uh, point uh, to, to that, uh, when you look at, at these slides, it's very busy but it gives you a comprehensive overview of what PMI thinks a project manager should do. These are the tasks of the project manager. And you see from all these tasks, about 50, there's only one dealing with benefits. And that's the project manager has to understand what benefits are expected from my project. In what kind of context do I work? That's the only activity of the project manager in terms of PMI's uh, thinking. By the way, these are the tasks which form the basis of the PMI exam if you want to be a PMI certified project manager. And uh, you have to do that. And another thing for, for the, for the uh, HI thing, you know, 
what PMI always had is, we initiate a project in doing this, then we plan the project, the project plan, then we execute the plan doing that, and then we monitor and control, which means we are looking at how is the plan working? Is the plan, compared to reality, is it, is it the same or not? It's not. So identify the gaps and act on the gaps, which means control. So, and then you go back to planning. So this is from PMI's view, even before the Agile Manifesto. They said all the planning, execution, monitoring control is going in circles, in cycles, continuous planning, continuous monitoring and, and execution. And at some point of time, by mo while monitoring the plan against what has been done, you identify, okay, we have achieved the target, and you can go out and close out the project. So these are the, the activities what the project manager should do. And, you know, the project manager is not doing these. The program manager, sorry. Um, another view on the difference between the project and the program is you know that magic triangle, cost, time, scope, quality, and the project manager is looking into the depth, into the project, trying to plan it, to deliver on the plan, and to control the, 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 the changes and everything, and, and, and go, go back. While the program manager is looking on the outside, and these are the, again, the, the four domains that the program manager is dealing with in terms of uh, program management. So we're looking at the strategy alignment and the benefits, what do you want to achieve in, in, in the organization. Um, we're looking in setting up the governance of the program. You have maybe 10 projects in that, you have some operations, you have some, some uh, uh, sponsors, some steering committees, you have the end users, a lot of people involved in the program, and you have to make sure that these people don't talk to each other in an uncontrolled way. They will anyhow, but you have to try to get a control about the communication relationships, and that's called governance. Very important part of the uh, responsibility of a program manager. And you have to deal with the stakeholders, much more than a project manager, because Stakeholders are to be influenced so that they support your program and that they don't fight it and that they are somehow uh, covered. This is <coughs> to the fact uh, that this could be called its politics. So you need political skills in the end to develop them as a program manager. As a project manager, many of you as a project manager don't like politics. You know, they want to stay out of it. Somebody else should take care. The, the, the product owner should take care about these politics. No, in, in the program, it's the program manager's key task to make sure politics work in the benefit of the whole program. So, the five gaps between the program and a, and a project is first, success is defined differently in the moment. And we want to create values. For values, we, we, we need a benefit, so the program delivers the benefit. Education gap. Project managers are not educated to deliver benefits. The methodology gap. So if you look at standards, ISO uh, standard for project management doesn't talk about benefits so much. PIMBO guide, PRINCE2, doesn't talk so much about benefits. So if something's talking about benefits in education, that's the program manager education. But we only have about 1,700 certified program managers from PMI side globally, but we have 800,000 uh, project managers. So there's a gap in, in, in education programs uh, for sure. Um, methodology gap, PIM book guide, I talked about that. Signif significant capabilities gap, this was a survey of Sergio Pellegrinelli saying, okay, what is behavior and uh, uh, of the good project versus the good program managers and also the, the, the inward outward uh, orientation gap. So in the end, you know, you might be a good lion and you can consider if you really want to have an impact on your business, might, maybe you should uh, merge into an elephant uh, and it also has the effect that you live longer. Because I must say the life of a program manager it's very much more interesting and less stressful than a, the life of a project manager who is mainly driven by deadlines and requests he cannot really uh, fulfill. 
I hope uh, you got a little bit the message about uh, what, uh, what the differences are. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, especially from, from the pro uh, program managers. So, did you find yourself in here? Oh yeah, uh, it's in here. You know, this is the benefits uh, realization phases. And by the way, these these go some, some in, in cycles. So what you do is the first when you identify benefits, you look at critical success factors. I don't know if it's uh, yeah this one yeah critical success factors where you okay say what has to be uh, measured in order to make sure we we reach these expected benefits. But then you transfer these into KPIs, so key performance indicators, which really is, uh, are defined for each of the benefit. And mostly they are demanded today to be financial KPIs. But as, as I said with my example before, you know, with the, with, the, with the daddy who comes home and has more time for his family, it could be also something, something else. And I am promoting to look into, into other uh, measurements than financial uh, measurements, for, because most benefits which you're really looking at, you know, they, they are hardly uh, to be me measured um, um, in, a, in a financial way. So for instance, that, that nine years program I'm now working on, you know, um, the main benefits they're looking at to survive as a company. So you could translate it in some revenue, profits, figures, whatever, but that's not really the, the case and, and, and the fact what you're looking at. Survival of the company, what, what does it mean? You know, look in, into the environment. How is this a market changing, competition uh, changing, and so on. And these are the things you have to have in focus as a program manager. Does it answer your question a little bit? What about you? OK. Any other questions? You feel lost. So you need a beer, I think. Yeah? So thank you very much for attending and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference tomorrow.